Uh, all right, what's going on? Today we're going to talk about the surprising benefit to self-sabotage. So this is a really interesting topic because I think a lot of people struggle with it and we see it in a very, very negative light. So I think what I'm going to share today is going to surprise you. So, you know, if it ever feels like you're getting in your own way, first off, you're not alone. And there's a reason why this happens, right? So self-sabotage doesn't make you a bad person. It just makes you human. So really what I want you to take away from this episode today is not just understanding how to get around self-sabotage, but understand how you can turn it into something that is an advantage for you. And I know that sounds crazy, <laughs> but I'm going to, I'm going to share with you exactly how we can do that today. So that, that's the point of it. Now, if I do share something that's helpful for you um, and you'd like to say, Hey, I don't know how to, you know, it's good information, but I don't know how to apply this to my personal circumstances. Cool. You can just hop on a quick chat with me, freedomnutrition.rocks slash let's chat. You're always welcome to book in a quick 15 minute power chat with me. We'll get you, we'll get you sorted. Um, I got an ebook called Crush Your Cravings. You can grab a copy of that at freedomnutrition.rocks slash book. So freedomnutrition.rocks slash book. And I have three free seven day challenges. Say that five times fast. <laughs> three free seven day challenges uh, in emotional eating, fatless fundamentals, and build your roadmap. So, really teaching you how you can take everything that, uh, that I learned and put it into practice and set yourself up for health in the long term. All right, cool. So, um, what does self sabotage look like for you? That's kind of the first you know, thing to, to think about here. <clears throat> so, how does it show up for you? You know, and I think a simple way to think about self sabotage is this when we say we want something, and then we go about making sure that it doesn't happen, right? So, for example, um, for many years, I tried to use exercise to compensate for my eating habits. You know, I'd exercise regularly, but then at the end of it, I'd say, you know, uh, well, I've exercised today, so I deserve this bowl of ice cream after dinner. Or I ate healthy at breakfast and lunch, so now I'm having mac and cheese for dinner. You know, th this kind of stuff. Or I'm stressed and tired. I had a hard day. I need to, I need to treat myself. Or... You know, I've been eating healthy all week so I can eat what I want on the weekend. You get you get the picture, right? Um, so the thought is here, like, do you ever find yourself justifying, you know, unhelpful and unhealthy behaviors? And if you do, don't feel guilty about it. I'm going to explain why. Um, but what, what would that look like for you? That's what I'd, I'd love to hear, you know. And so for me, I would, I would, uh, I would totally start to feel guilty and, and I would feel this regret and remorse after, you know, what have I done? You know, I've undone all my hard work and stuff. And, uh, there's a guy that I really like, um, who has a great analogy about building a house during the week and burning it down on the weekend kind of thing, you know, and, and it's like self-sabotage. Sometimes it happens intentionally, but a lot of the times it's happening subconsciously, right? So it's like, there's this belief in the back of our mind that, uh, really, like gets in the way of our health and well-being. So I would be like, you know, ah, like I, I would treat it like I was surprised that it was happening. You know, like, oh man, my weight just just like crept up on me. I'm I'm, I'm just tired. And then, you know, so then I, then I would get frustrated, right? So, you know, here, here I've, I've like regained this weight. I'm feeling frustrated and like, what am I going to do? I'm, I'm finally going to, you know, this is it. This is the last time this is happening to me. Um, you know, that's it. I'm taking charge for good. But then it wouldn't be long before I'd start thinking like, yeah, this probably isn't going to happen because, you know, every time I try and I fail, you know, or uh, between my family responsibilities and, and work and, you know, I just don't even have the time to focus on me. So thinking about that, it's like, well, why is it, <clears throat> pardon me. So why is it that we self-sabotage? Um, why, why is it that this happens? And I think this is what's going to surprise you. So what if I told you that self-sabotage is actually a way that you take care of yourself? Yeah. How about that? Self-sabotage is a way that you take care of yourself. Now, I think that's probably a surprising thing to, <laughs> a surprising thing to hear, right? And, you know, look, let's be real. Maybe it's not the best way that you can take care of yourself, but it's certainly one way that you can. Now let's take a deeper look at that. So Self-sabotage, in a sense, is taking care of one immediate need, but it's at the cost of our well-being as a whole, right? So, for example, let's say I overeat junk food when I get home after a stressful day at work. Well, what is the immediate need from that situation? Well, it's emotional comfort. Okay, stressful day at work, needs need some emotional comfort. So the self-sabotaging behavior would be, let's say, eating food that's unhealthy, like some junk food, but it makes me feel better in the moment when I eat that food. So I feel better emotionally. But physically, I'm paying the price for eating the unhealthy food. So what's interesting here is the highest need is always is, is what always takes priority for fulfillment, right? So if your highest need is like unconscious or neglected, the unconscious brain is going to fill it, right? So here's another example. <clears throat> Let's say uh, you sleep through your alarm. So the conscious need is I need to get to work on time. But the unconscious need is I need rest because I'm tired and I'm getting burnt out. So when we start to look at self-sabotage through this lens, first off, it's more common than we realize. Like everyone does it to some degree. 
there is in fact so here's what i think is is i think really really powerful and that is that there are positive aspects of self-sabotage as crazy as that sounds so here's here is what is positive about self-sabotage it always points to something that we truly need more than what we think we need let me say that again so self-sabotage points to something we truly need more than what we think we need that's what's really interesting about it so self-sabotage can serve as this powerful guiding system towards better emotional health now you th it doesn't sound crazy to think about it like this right but what it is so it, i'll say that one more time it points to something we truly need more than what we think we need right so really what it's doing is it's you know it's inviting us to be more self-aware and more who's like self-inquiring about what it is that we truly need and so this is this is where it gets really interesting is when we start to reframe self-sabotage instead of looking at it like i'm weak i'm a failure i've got no willpower i've got no discipline like what is wrong with me and we go well hang on a sec this is this is meeting a need and in fact really that is shining a light on something that i need in my life so you know, something to reflect on is, okay, so you go, what's the behavior that you have going on in your life that you recognize as self-sabotage? You know, what, what comes up for you, you know, when you reflect on that? And I'll share an example. It's, let's say, after a hard day of work, um, I want, uh, well, let's just say I want chocolate and um, maybe a glass of Coke, you know, on ice to unwind or a bottle, <laughs> you know? And it's like, okay, well, what's the need that meets right there? Well, after a hard day of work, I'm wanting, let's say, a cold beverage, uh, you know, a cold uh, carbonated beverage and some chocolate to unwind. So the need that that's meeting is comfort after a stressful day. So the first step, when you figure out like, hey, I do this thing that undermines the results I'm trying to get, okay, but what's that behavior doing for you, right? So for me, it's comfort after a stressful day. But the behavior that's self-sabotaging is eating food and drink in a way that's like unhealthy for me but it makes me feel better in the moment, right? It solves the problem. It meets that immediate need of comfort after a stressful day. Now, of course, the result of that is if I, if I indulge and, and overconsume, then I'm going to feel terrible the day after, right? And the price isn't my health gets com uh, compromised. And so what we want to do is instead of, instead of creating judgment around ourselves for the behavior that's happening, we say this behavior makes sense, even if it doesn't make sense as a long term, like it doesn't help me in the long term. And so it's like, can we, can we make an adjustment to this pattern of behavior, right? And so let's, let's say, for example, okay, so I see that this is, this behavior is actually meeting a need. It's pointing to something that I need in my life. Okay. So what could I do differently? How could I adjust this where it still feels like I'm meeting that need, but not doing it in such a destructive way? And so it's like, well, I could buy, say, some sparkling water and throw a wedge of lemon in there as opposed to just drinking a glass of soda or, uh, you know, a bottle of pop kind of thing. I could um, maybe make the switch to dark chocolate instead of milk chocolate because, you know, dark chocolate, I'm less likely to overconsume. I could sip it while relaxing in my favorite chair so it feels like I'm doing something indulgent at the end of the day. And so in a sense, what I'm doing is I'm rewarding myself. I'm meeting that need, that need for rest and sort of decompression after a long day in a way that doesn't uh, impact my long-term health negatively. So if we were to break this down into a process, what would this look like? First thing is to figure out, well, what is, what is the self-sabotaging behavior, right? What's what's going on here? And once you identify it, like <laughs> the important thing is don't start to create negative judgment about yourself because all it does is make you wanna hide the behavior. Then the next thing would be to figure out, okay, well, what is it, what is, like, what's the need that this is filling? What, what need is this meeting for me? So when you start to look at it through that lens and you go, okay, this isn't entirely negative because what this is doing is this is shining a light on something, an unmet need in my life that I'm ignoring or neglecting. And my subconscious, unconscious mind is basically forcing me to meet that need and driving me to carry out this behavior. So once you figure out what that need is, then you can start to think about it a little bit differently. Now, when you think about the behavior, the self-sabotaging behavior that's not helpful, maybe it's like eating junk food late at night or something like that. You do, you do want to think about this honestly. Like what I'm not trying to, to clarify, I'm not trying to say that if you have a destructive self-sabotaging behavior that's hurting your health, that you should continue to carry out that pattern of behavior. You should try to change it. However, and so you, you want to be able to reflect honestly and compassionately on it without judgment, but figure out, look, this isn't a good pattern of behavior that I want to continue. But ultimately to, so adopt like this flexible mindset. Okay, I, I need to adjust this behavior to meet this need in a healthier way. 
So rather than trying to sort of wipe that behavior away altogether, it's like, how do I adjust this behavior to meet that need in a, in a healthy way? And so really what we're saying here is, you know, we want to, we don't necessarily, like, I don't think we're ever going to entirely erase self-sabotage out of our life, right? So instead, what we want to do is when it comes up, use that self-sabotage and, and the awareness that it's happening to become aware of what is the unconscious need that I'm meeting or that I'm taking care of with that behavior. So why am I doing this? And, and what is it that I really want? And, and maybe it's a sign if you're really, really struggling with self-sabotage, maybe this is a sign that you need to take inventory of what are your most important needs that you are ignoring or neglecting and really become more aware of them instead of denying them and neglecting them because something else you think logically, maybe it's more important, right? Like, do I veg out on the couch to relieve stress? Do I overeat when I feel emotional? And really, so you go, okay, if this is what I'm doing and this is the need it's meeting, how could I meet that same need in a conscious and really a proactive way? So what adjustments could I make to that behavior? So instead of trying to white knuckle my way through it and get rid of it or ignore it or not do it, how could I adjust that behavior in such a way that I can still meet that need and it's positive for my health, right? We want to get rid of this idea of self-shaming and self-punishing. We want to move into the space of self-nurturing and self-supporting, right? So the more that we choose to respect and honor ourselves with our behavior and actually meet the needs, remember self-sabotage shines a light on an unmet need. So when we choose to meet that need and honor that and respect that need that we have, it's a lot less likely that we're going to be engaging in destructive self-sabotaging behaviors in the future. So that's that's it today. It's a short one today. Thanks so much for tuning in. You know, I really I really hope this gives you something to take away where you can see not only like how you can break free from self sabotage, but what you can what you can turn that into. So once again, just before I wrap up, I want to throw this out there. If you find this helpful, but you're not sure how to put this into practice in your own life, I invite you to go to freedomnutrition.rocks/slash let's chat. You're more than welcome to book a free 15 minute quick chat with me. We'll we'll figure out what's going on with you and uh, what's the, what's the next step for you. If you do want a copy of Crush Your Cravings, you can go to freedomnutrition.rocks slash book and get a copy of that. And of course, my three free seven-day challenges. I got to learn how to say that faster. Um, and emotional eating, uh, fat loss fundamentals, and build your roadmap. Any one of those is going to help you get on track. So you're more than welcome to sign up for those. Anyways, thanks so much for tuning in. Do hope you have a great weekend. Take care.